Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The arctangent function is bounded. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves of our definition of the arctangent function. Let R be any real number and consider the following sequence. Then we have proven that the sequence two to the n Rn converges. And we define the value that this sequence converges to to be the arc tangent of R. In particular, we showed in the case where R is equal to zero, then this sequence is a constant sequence of zeros. So the arc tangent of zero is zero. Now, from here, we proved several properties of the arc tangent function. One of which is that the arc tangent function is an odd function. In other words, we proved that arctangent of negative r is equal to negative arctangent of r, for all real numbers are. We also proved for all positive real numbers r, this inequality holds. In fact, if r is less than zero, then the inequalities get reversed. And with these two facts, we were able to show the following property. The absolute value of arctangent of r is equal to arctangent of absolute value of r, for all real numbers r. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, first of all, what does it mean for the arctangent function to be bounded? Well, one way of putting it is as follows. It means that there exists a positive constant, capital M, such that for all x in the real numbers, the absolute value of arctangent of x is less than or equal to capital M. So, to prove this, let's first consider an arbitrary real number x. And we're first going to consider the case where x is not equal to zero. Well then, we know from this fact that the absolute value of arctangent of x is equal to the arctangent of absolute value of x. And, we know since x is not equal to zero, the absolute value of x is greater than zero. So applying this fact, we have that the arctangent of absolute value of x is less than two times the absolute value of x all over one plus the square root of one plus absolute value of x squared. Right, and we know that absolute value of x squared is equal to x squared, so we don't need the absolute values. And now, we're going to bound this guy above by some fixed positive constant. To see how we can do that, well, notice in the denominator, if we replace 1 plus square root of 1 plus x squared with just square root of 1 plus x squared, then that's only going to make this thing bigger. The reason why is because we know that this is true. Well, then, if we take the reciprocal of both sides, the sign of the inequality will flip. But then, if we multiply two absolute value of x on both sides of this inequality, we get this. So this guy is less than two absolute value of x over the square root of one plus x squared. So we have this now. But then the claim is, in the denominator, if we replace square root of one plus x squared with just square root of x squared, then that's only going to make this thing even bigger. And to see why that happens, well, we know that 1 plus x squared is bigger than x squared. And then if we take the square root of both of these, the sign of the inequality remains the same. But then, since x is not equal to 0, x squared is bigger than 0, and therefore the square root of x squared must be bigger than 0. And that tells us that the reciprocal of both of these guys makes sense. So if we take the reciprocal of both of them, the sign of the inequality will flip, So we get this, but then we just multiply two absolute value of x on both sides of this inequality. And we get this. So this guy must be less than this. But the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. So we have two absolute value of x over absolute value of x. So the absolute value of x is cancel out and we're just left with two. So if x is not equal to 0, then the absolute value of arctangent of x is less than 2. If we consider the case x equals 0, well, we know that the arctangent of 0 is 0. 
So we have the absolute value of arctangent of x is equal to the absolute value of 0, which is equal to 0, which is less than 2. And what this shows is given any real number x, the absolute value of the arctangent of x is less than 2. And this proves that the arctangent function is bounded. Because if we go to our definition and we take capital M to be 2, then it is true that for all x in the real numbers, the absolute value of arctangent of x is less than or equal to 2. In fact, we proved for all x in the real numbers, the absolute value of arctangent of x is strictly less than 2. But strict inequalities imply weak inequalities, so we have proven precisely this statement. So, the arctangent function is bounded. And so this completes the proof. So what did we just prove? We proved, given any real number x, the absolute value of arctangent of x is less than 2. But we know a property of absolute values tells us that this is equivalent to saying that the arctangent of x lies between negative 2 and positive 2. So we see, given any real number x, the arctangent of x is less than 2. And that means 2 is an upper bound of the arctangent function. And then, from the completeness property of the real numbers, since the arctangent function has an upper bound, that implies the arctangent function must also have a least upper bound. And so we now define pi over 2 to be the least upper bound of the arctangent function. In other words, we're defining pi to be twice the least upper bound of the arctangent function. And also we see, given any real number x, the arctangent of x is greater than negative 2. So negative 2 is a lower bound of the arctangent function. So because the arctangent function has a lower bound, that implies the arctangent function must have a greatest lower bound. And for now, we are going to denote the greatest lower bound of the arctangent function by the letter m. The claim is that m is equal to negative pi over 2. And to prove this, we're essentially going to prove that m is less than or equal to negative pi over 2, and m is greater than or equal to negative pi over 2. The way we can get those two inequalities is by showing that negative pi over 2 is a lower bound of the arctangent function, and that negative m is an upper bound of the arctangent function. So, the way we write up the proof is as follows. Let's first give ourselves an arbitrary real number x. And now, let's remind ourselves that pi over 2 is an upper bound of the arctangent function. And by definition of an upper bound, that means every output value of the arctangent function is less than or equal to pi over 2. So in particular, the arctangent of negative x is less than or equal to pi over 2. But then, since m is a lower bound of the arctangent function, we know by definition of a lower bound, that means every output value of the arctangent function is greater than or equal to m. So in particular, the arctangent of negative x is greater than or equal to m. So, putting these two inequalities together, we have that m is less than or equal to the arctangent of negative x, which is less than or equal to pi over 2. And then, since arctangent is an odd function, we can pull the negative sign to the outside. And then we just multiply negative 1 through this inequality. And we get this. So what do we see here? We see, given any real number x, the arctangent of x is less than or equal to negative m. And that tells us that negative m is an upper bound of the arctangent function. But since pi over 2 is the least upper bound of the arctangent function, we have that pi over 2 is less than or equal to negative m. And similarly, we see, given any real number x, we have that the arctangent of x is greater than or equal to negative pi over 2. Well, that tells us that negative pi over 2 is a lower bound of the arctangent function. But since m is the greatest lower bound of the arctangent function, 
we have that m is greater than or equal to negative pi over 2. And then if we take this inequality and multiply negative 1 on both sides, we get negative pi over 2 is greater than or equal to m. So we have m is greater than or equal to negative pi over 2, and m is less than or equal to negative pi over 2. And these two inequalities imply m is equal to negative pi over 2. And so this completes the proof. So now we're going to replace m with negative pi over 2. So now notice, by the definition of upper bound and lower bound, if we consider any real number x, we're going to have that arctangent of x is less than or equal to pi over 2, and arctangent of x is greater than or equal to negative pi over 2. So arctangent of x lies in the closed interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But the claim is that arctangent of x also lies in the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Right? In other words, arctangent of x can never be equal to negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And the way we can show that is using the fact that arctangent is a strictly increasing function, which we proved. So to prove this, let's first give ourselves an arbitrary real number x. Well then, since arctangent is a strictly increasing function, we must have that the arctangent of x is strictly less than the arctangent of x plus 1. And also, the arctangent of x minus 1 is strictly less than the arctangent of x. But then, by definition of an upper bound, we know that the arctangent of x plus 1 is less than or equal to pi over 2. And, by definition of lower bound, we have that arctangent of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative pi over 2. So now let's put all of these inequalities together. We have negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to arctangent of x minus 1, which is strictly less than arctangent of x, which is strictly less than arctangent of x plus 1, which is less than or equal to pi over 2. And this tells us that negative pi over 2 is strictly less than arctangent of x, which is strictly less than pi over 2. In other words, arctangent of x lies in the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we see, given any real number x, we have that arctangent of x belongs to the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So this completes the proof. In other words, what we now know is that the arctangent function is a function from the real numbers to the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.